Hello everyone, and welcome to my F1 2013 setup guide. So then it's been a long time coming, hasn't it, my uh, setup guide, but I uh, wanted to make sure that I actually know what I'm talking about in terms of setup guide, not do one too early when I don't actually fully understand everything. I think I pretty much understand everything now, uh, good enough anyway to make a pretty good setup, so um, I'm going to run through it. This video is also designed so that you can hopefully run it um, for each new track um, and just figure out a setup from there. I'm going to basically tell you how I figure out a setup for each track. So then, no mess about, let's get straight into it. So then aerodynamics, of course, wing levels. Generally speaking, you want 1-1 one, one wings. That it works across most, well, low wings at least works across most tracks. I tend to run something like 2-1 because I like a nice good front end on it. Um, some tracks I'll even run as high as perhaps 5 or 6-1. I'll, I'll usually, I'll try, I'll start on something like 2-1, maybe 3-1. Um, then, depending on how it's going, if I feel like I do with a bit more front end grip and I feel like I've got plenty of rear grip, I might put up to say 5 or 6-1. Uh, then if that feels okay, then I'll probably run with that, because usually higher than that is a bit ridiculous, too much difference between the, the front and rear wings. Um, and on cert only a couple of tracks you want higher wings, so w almost always one rear wing, very occasionally you want a higher rear wing. I never run 11 rear wing personally, I only ever run it really as high as 8 or 9 really, somewhere like there. So somewhere like Monaco for example, you're going to want 11 front wing, that's pretty standard. Um, same as I would say Singapore. Uh, Hungary as well as a high wing track. There's there's a there's a couple of tracks, not so much Singapore maybe, but um, definitely Hungary and Monaco. So this it's always worth trying the higher wings. Somewhere like Monza, obviously higher wings isn't going to work, but a tighter street track you think higher wings is going to work. Go for it. Um, Eleven front wing, and then just again see how low you can get that rear wing because that's the thing that causes the most drag. Eleven eleven, you're just wasting drag. You can at least run eleven nine, and it feels totally fine. Um, you know, if you can get it as low as eleven six and it handles fine, then great. But uh, of course, you want to be a little bit careful with the with the uh on this here so we're at silverstone so i'll run probably what i'd run at silverstone probably something like three one maybe even four one at silverstone because it's uh quite a high speed circuit you want a good front end in the high speed corners leave that free one for now so that's the wings then hopefully that makes pretty much makes sense onto the braking then straight away so i almost always run now 51 49 high large brakes so i have seen people run rearward brakes someone like owenage would run something like 49 48 towards the rear um and you don't you, you can't break as late with that you can you can trail break a lot you use that if you like to break very very deep into a corner um, and only stop breaking when you get to the apex then start on the throttle but i personally i prefer to have it like that because then i can be later on the brakes and be harder on the brakes and then ease off the brakes uh, a little bit sooner and then just get out the corner i prefer a uh, poor entry to a corner but a really good exit whereas ownage prefers the exact opposite um something like that but i i always run 41 50 i used to run 52 48 um but i found that it was it was good but in some corners it was a little bit iffy and it, you just had to be so careful with the brakes so that you do also have to be careful with the brakes they do lock easily the fronts in certain corners but it, it's it's more than manageable um and if you do find you're really struggling i would go something like that i wouldn't ever adjust these i never ever adjust these um except for in somewhere like maybe monaco if you're really struggling with the lock-in either front or rear maybe go to, to medium um, always keep that on high um maybe reduce the brake size because when you reduce the brake size you actually gain a uh, weight advantage so small brakes will be lighter you'll be faster around the corners so um never reduce that because that's that's got no penalty for reducing that that the only difference is you've got worse brakes that's the only difference whereas that you've got worse brakes and but you've got a lighter car so you're faster around the corners Again, hopefully that makes sense, but generally speaking, anyway, I'd run 51, 49, high, large. I always start with that on a track, and then maybe just if I need to, but generally that's pretty solid across all tracks. Balance then, I always, always, always run 111 uh, front uh, and rear anti-roll bars then. Um, that's because one, um, they were like high value generates turning, created more responsive car at the cost of actual cornering grip. So... I I never like turning. I don't mind a bit of turning, but I'd rather have mid corner grip than turning. I, the way the reason that is is that I feel like I can get the car into the corner. Um, it's my job. That's my job is to get the car into that apex. That that's my job as a driver. The car's job is to stick to that apex when I get to it at whatever speed I want to get to it at. So if they got a better car, I can take better apex speed. Um, but it's it's fundamentally my job to get the car into the corner. So I don't like turning. I prefer to have actual corner and grip. So that's that. But 11 on the rear though, um, to give the car a bit of oversteer because these in this game cars tend to understeer a great deal. So uh, run 11 just to give it a bit of oversteer and it just unbalances the car a little bit and enables you to get into the corners a bit better. Create some rotation in the car. So always, always, always I run 111. So that's balance then. On to suspension then. Now. This has changed recently, which is why it's taken me so long to make this video really mainly suspension. I used to run 1-1, 11-11. One, one, 
not anymore. I generally now start with one, probably even, I usually start with one, 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 one suspension now. When I start on a track, I'll start with one, 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 one. Um, the only difference, this will always be one. Rear ride height is always one. Sometimes I'll run 11 front like that because that gives you better straight line speed. I've mentioned it a few of my videos before. So that is best for cornering. And 11 is best for straight line speed, but it does sacrifice the cornering speed a little bit, uh, but not hugely. You can get away with it. So someone like Monza, 11, 11 one ride height is always the way to go because it gives you better straight line speed. Someone like Monaco, 1-1 one, one is always going to be best, um, which just gives you slightly better cornering. So as we're at Silverstone, I would probably start with 1-1 one, one, um, on the ride height at least. Stiffness, as I said, I, I recently run, I, I always just run 11-11, but I've been running 1-1 one, one for the same reason about the balance. 1-1 one, one gives you better cornering grip. It, it gives you a bit of a sloppy car. It, the car rolls a lot from side to side. It does give a sloppy car. But again, that's my job. It's my job to get the car into the corner. That, that's my job as a driver. The car's job is is to stick to the corner once I get there. So that's what 1-1 one, one gives you. Um, so generally speaking, that, that is the best. And particularly in slower corners, that does, does give you better grip. Um, but again, it does. It will take a bit of getting used to. If you're used to very good turning, um, running my setup will you'll struggle for a first little bit. But once you're used to it, you should be okay. Um, sometimes I will try that high. Someone like Silverstone, I would try it probably 11-11. Um, and I always keep these the same as well, pretty much. But so yeah, someone like Silverstone, I would try it purely because it's so high speed and you are turning the car and your car in at high speed the whole time. You want to flick the car in. Um, but even so, I would start with 1-1. Um, and then just, like I say, try 11-11. Just see if it's faster lap time, literally. literally. It would feel a lot different. It would feel a much better turn in. But just see if it, it would feel faster, as well, I've noticed. 11 11 does feel faster, but um, it might not necessarily be. So just do it on lap time. Uh, so that's suspension then. We're rattling through these, aren't we? Gearbox. Now, this has also changed recently. I thought when I first got the game that, as in previous games, absolutely full gear ratios was no slower in acceleration. Than, um, than any other gear ratio, than shorter gear ratios. I found out that is not the case in this game, so gear ratios do actually matter. So I would generally gear the seventh gear to just be hitting the rev limiter at the end of the straight, maybe hit it for, you know, 50 meters or so, not long, at the end of the longest straight. Um, so say that's there, usually somewhere like that, it usually is. Um, and I'm, then I'll then use sixth gear like that, so you've got a big, bigger step between the gears. Um, that's generally what I use, because then it gives you better speed on the higher speed. Because generally speaking, fifth and below, it doesn't matter what your straight line speed is. It's unlikely someone's going to have such straight line speed advantage on you that they're going to get past you into up to a fifth gear straight. Sixth and seventh, however, that's a longer straight and they are more likely to get past you. So you want the gears to be a bit shorter to give you that bit of boost at the end of the straight because you've got slightly shorter gears. Um, I have seen people run run perhaps something like this, like that, but I would run very long, low gears because that helps with traction. With this game, of course, it, traction is very difficult. If you run very long gears like that, it's it's... Uh, it gives you a lot more traction. It feels like it gives you more traction. It doesn't actually give you more, of course. Um, but, of course, you've got longer gears, so you've effectively got less power at the wheels. Um, so I always run uh, full gears. Sometimes I will I will go from further. If I feel like I'm really suffering with acceleration, I might do something like that. Not often, though. And uh, the only other thing, really, to consider is, is a corner. So say if I was running my standard setup like that, like I said, say... Um, there was a corner where fifth gear was about right, but it was it was either a, a rev limit of fourth gear or a fifth gear. It's right on the limit. I might reduce the fifth gear down to something like that, maybe, maybe something like that, just purely so then that fifth gear is exactly right for the corner. So it's just, like I say, I would, I would start with that, uh, start with that, generally speaking, and then adjust it. Um, if you need more straight line speed, adjust it up a bit, um, and then if you need any corner adjustments, do that, but I would always leave this uh, absolutely maximum. Um, so there we go. So that's that then. Uh, been oh, one more thing for Gearbox, actually. I have tried that, and it doesn't work. <laughs> I've tried, I think it was actually that I tried. Very big difference, and it just means you're, you're out of the power band in 7th, and it just doesn't work. So, I have tried it, and it doesn't work. So, a bit of advice for you there. Alignment then, always, 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 full left camber and full right toe. I will go through a couple of um, other things about my setup, things like tyre wear in a minute. But, uh, full left camber, full right toe, always, always, always. Um, full left camber is supposed to give you... Or is it toe? One of them. I think it's camber. It's supposed to give you bad tyre wear. So supposedly running that would give you better tyre wear. And it does, but not worth it. Really not worth it in this game. Um, it does give you slightly better tyre wear, but it's it costs you too much time. It probably costs you maybe two or three tenths per lap. And you think after ten laps, that's two or three seconds. So it's 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 a lot of time, possibly even more. I've not fully tested it, but full left camber, full right toe is always, always the way to go. 
Um, and that's that then, really. So that's that's the setup then. That's generally how the, the, the system I would go through to create a setup for each new track. I would start with that baseline and then adjust it accordingly, as I've already mentioned. As I said, tire wear, so I would never adjust my setup for tire wear unless it's extreme, unless unless I'm struggling to get to a two-stop, say, and it's really, really close. Then I might look at the suspension, which uh, lower suspension like that will give you better tire wear, higher suspension will give you worse tire wear. Um, so usually I would run lower the suspension first and foremost. If that's already low, then I might look at the camber, but I've never adjusted the camber yet in any race in this game. So, um, But that's only really if, if it's very, very marginal between a two-stop, but... Usually, I would just drive easier. So if it's your front left that's wearing heavily, bear in mind, understeer in high-speed corners is what damages the tyre. So if it's your front left that's wearing, it's the right-hand high-speed corners that are killing it. So take it a bit easier. Either use slightly less steering angle, or uh, so if you genuinely are understeering, use less steering angle, of course. Um, or if, you're, if you've got the bang-on steering angle, and say you're on a pad, which means you've always got the perfect steering angle, just go a bit slower. It's going to cost you maybe half a tenth, a tenth a lap to go a little bit slower through that corner, but it will absolutely save you in terms of tyre wear. Um, so if there's one or two corners that really, really hammer the tyres, I would tend to lose a tenth in each corner per lap. So that's two tenths a lap. That is quite a lot. But at the end of the stint, if your tyres can last one lap longer than the other person's, if their tyres completely go off, they will lose at least two seconds a lap. So that's your two seconds made up straight away after ten laps. So um, I would always use driving style, not set up, to... Uh, Give me better tyre wear. Um, and I think that's pretty much it, isn't it? Straight line speed. I've sort of already been through that. That's only really wings and then suspension as well if you particularly need it. Um, like I say, high front ride height. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I think so. Can't figure it out for now. So like I say, hopefully you can go through this video every time you need to create a setup for a track. Hopefully you can start this video. Um, and uh, hopefully you can get along with it. Right, do let me know what you thought of this video. Do let me know how you get on with my setup and my setup advice in the comments. And I thank you for watching. Bye-bye.